Good news, Info fans. The world is on the brink of multiple major regional conflicts. That means a ton more content for us to provide for your viewing pleasure. And if you got stock in Northrop Grumman or Rheinmetall, get ready to cash in because 2024 is going to be a hot one. These are the top 10 militaries of 2024. Number 10. Italy Italy's been a surprising up-and-comer the last few years, outpacing absolute European powerhouse and NATO's favorite bad boy, Turkey. But everyone's least favorite type of bacon is going to have to take a back seat, because Italy is knocking it out of the top 10 altogether. Italy's been a curious case when it comes to defense spending. While publicly its political parties largely played down any ambitions to increase defense spending, a European tradition, secretly the government's been passing a series of defense increases since 2018. Russia's attempt to destroy Russia by invading Ukraine put the spook on the current Italian right-wing government, who vowed increased defense spending to reach NATO's goal of 2% of GDP. Currently, Italy spends only 1.51% of GDP on its defense. Big budget items include 41 more F-35 fighters, which is big news after Italy slashed its plans to buy 131 of the 5th gen jets, down to only 90. The F-35 largely is the reason why Italy has surged past a real military heavyweight like Turkey to take the number 10 spot. Turkey famously was cut out of the F-35 program altogether by US President Barack Obama after it bought S-400 units from Russia. President Obama warned the Turks that Russians could use the platforms to gather data on the F-35s in the Turkish inventory, but he was ignored. Subsequently, he pulled the plug on the F-35 deal altogether. Now, as NATO fleets of F-35s grow, Turkey is left eating their dust despite attempts at a homegrown fifth-generation fighter that have left many skeptical. Italy is also taking its role in Mediterranean defense seriously. Recently, Navy Chief Admiral Enrico Credidino stated that the Italian Navy was critically short on drones and anti-submarine warfare aircraft. He commented that whenever they required such capabilities, they were forced to ask their American allies in Sicily to cover for them. Further, Credidino is looking to boost recruiting to address a critical shortfall of personnel. Currently, Italy cannot guarantee proper crew rotations for its naval fleet, putting undue stress on personnel and significantly limiting operational uptime. Italy is also looking to purchase the American-made HIMARS after its stunning performance in Ukraine. However, it is unknown when it will get its hands on the weapon system, given the whole global demand for the system that surged in the wake of Russia's invasion. A pressing need for new tanks and armored vehicles is also pushing the Italian government to invest heavily in both. Italy is looking to greatly increase its presence in Africa to combat rising extremism and help ensure continental stability. As part of its refocus on strengthening ties within the United States and in the wake of Chinese anger over Italy leaving the Belt and Road Initiative, Italy is also looking to expand its ability to project power in the Southeast Pacific theater. This includes a dramatic naval expansion which will place a focus on anti-submarine warfare and drones. Number 9. France France is by far Europe's most capable military power, and if you removed the nuclear option from the only other European NATO power ranked above it, it would easily be Europe's most powerful military, period. But France has a critical problem that significantly hampers its odds of rising higher on the list, and it keeps it locked in the number 9 spot. While France fields some of the best combat systems in the world, its focus on quality over quantity means that it doesn't field a lot of them. And this leaves the military incapable of prolonged military campaigns. At even a quarter the rate of equipment loss that Ukraine has faced, France would have capitulated to Russia within months. Well, if it was forced to fight on its own, that is. The war in Ukraine has been costly for France, who is struggling to replace the Caesar howitzers it donated, given that it only started with 70 to begin with. With only about 200 Leclerc tanks, France can ill afford to donate any, and replacing equipment has historically been France's biggest problem. Even the French have admitted that their defense industry struggles to produce replenishment for even low-intensity conflicts in Africa, and currently the company that makes the Caesar howitzer only produces four a month. That production is being scaled up to eight by mid-2024, but the point still stands. France cannot fight an industrialized conflict, even if its technology far outmatches anything an adversary like Russia can throw at it. Sadly, while the US and others look to significantly expand their military stock, France seems stuck in the old post-World War II days. The European power is continuing to bet that high technology, speed, and surprise will be able to inflict catastrophic defeats early on in a conflict, preventing a slow-burning multi-year war like Ukraine. Much like the UK, France's focus has been myopically skewed toward the use of nuclear weapons. Its air force and navy are primarily designed for nuclear missions, and French military doctrine still sees nuclear weapons as the ultimate guarantor against invasion. But the war in Ukraine has shown that major industrial conflicts can still rage 
without the use of nuclear weapons, and if France found itself tested similarly, it would fail. France's biggest problem is not the quality of its forces or even equipment, but rather that it simply needs more of everything in its inventory. New thinking has penetrated French defense circles, arguing for a focus on adequate technology at large scale, rather than extremely capable technology at extremely low scale. What France needs the most is a happy medium, but for now the nation remains a significant cut above any competitor as long as the war is very short. Number 8. Japan Japan's place at number 8 on the list is only temporary because the Japan of 2025 will become unrecognizable. Japan is undertaking a 5-year, $315 billion military expansion, the greatest rearmament since World War II. But Hawaii natives can rest easy, because the reason for Japanese military expansion is the increasing power of China, not the US. As China continues to antagonize regional powers through its illegal reclamation of islands to turn them into military fortresses and insistence that all waters in the infamous Nine Dash Line belong to it, Japan is hoping that a significant increase in military power will deter China from starting a mess in the first place. Japan's also taking lessons from the Ukraine conflict and making a massive investment in increasing the amount of spare parts and other equipment needed for maintenance. This will place the Japanese defense forces in an excellent position to weather the high attrition of modern conventional warfare. But more importantly, it will address current maintenance problems forcing Japanese airplanes to remain grounded. The US and Japan also announced a joint cyber warfare venture, with Japan investing billions into cyber offense and defense, which will feature prominently in any future war. An investment in helicopters and troop landing vessels is aimed directly at denying China the opportunity to seize and hold islands in the disputed Senkaku Islands, a key concern for Japan. Japan is seeking to hit 2% of GDP in defense spending over the next five years, with its defense budget expanding to a tenth of all public spending. This will catapult Japan straight to the number three spot of biggest global defense spenders, and it's all aimed at deterring China. But some of Japan's future acquisitions have created significant internal debate over its pacifist status. These include the purchase of about 400 of the latest variant of the American Tomahawk cruise missile at a cost of $1.4 billion. It's also tapping Mitsubishi Heavy Industries to develop three new long-range missiles that Japan's planning to add to its arsenal. These missiles will allow Japan to, for the first time, strike inside China itself, which has prompted a bit of a constitutional crisis in the pacifist power. Many have called Japan's military buildup illegal, and yet Japan's leadership remains clear-eyed. In the wake of the stockpiling of thousands of missiles by the Chinese People's Liberation Army Rocket Force and China's plan to build a fleet of supercarriers, Japan can no longer remain safe, striking just beyond its own borders. The nation's having a bit of a domestic problem with its new ambitions, however, mostly because its native industry is not fully on board with the plan. Mitsubishi Heavy Industries is Japan's largest defense company, and yet military sales only account for a tenth of its total income. Other manufacturers have expressed concerns to the Japanese government that investing into building military hardware simply isn't profitable, and there is significant concern of multi-million dollar manufacturing plants simply remaining empty after Japan's rearmament is complete. Japan is hoping that by increasing the profit margin from a few percentage points to 15%, it can compel native industries to invest in Japan's rearmament. For now, though, Japanese industry is not ready to meet the challenge, and it'll likely be forced into delaying its massive rearmament or purchasing weapons from foreign sources like the US. Number 7. Pakistan Pakistan has seen a dramatic rise in power to the number 7 spot globally, largely thanks to exploiting its natural resources. In Pakistan, the military has been described as a military with a nation rather than the other way around, given the military's influence over the Pakistani government. Now Pakistan is in effect a military-run power, and this is causing serious problems that threaten the nation's future. With a defense budget of $7.5 billion and an active duty force of 654,000, Pakistan's military is huge. Its equipment faces significant modernity issues, though. It is looking to replace its aging stocks with new hardware. China and Pakistan have inked a deal for the latter to purchase 680 VT-4 main battle tanks, a third-generation model with advanced features. To date, Pakistan has 176 of the tanks, and these are the most modern and capable model out of a fleet of 3,700 MBTs. Its most numerous model of its al zarar tank, built in cooperation with China, of which the nation has 750. However, this is a second-generation model that will fare extremely poor against modern armor. Its most numerous armored personnel carrier is the American-made M113, a thoroughly obsolete model that doesn't fare well on the modern battlefield. 
In second place is its fleet of Italian-made Aveco VM90s, which are literally just trucks with no protection whatsoever. Pakistan's Air Force is not faring much better, currently being made of a mix of Chinese, American, and French aircraft, though the country is looking to reverse the logistics nightmare by heavily investing in the Chinese-made JF-17s and J-10Cs. However, Pakistan is currently experiencing an economic crisis with no clear solution in sight, with catastrophic inflation the worst in its history ravaging the value of the Pakistani rupee. With the military intervening in public affairs, gross financial mismanagement, and a tanking economy, Pakistan's spot on this list does not seem secure. Number 6. South Korea South Korea, or the Fun Korea as it's known in defense circles, is a military powerhouse because its existence literally depends on it. With some very angry boys on its northern border, South Korea doesn't have the luxury of European countries who don't take their own defense seriously. The nation made news when Poland announced it was snubbing Germany and it'll start purchasing tanks straight from South Korea. This was a monumental accomplishment for South Korea, who had been trying to crack the European defense market for years, and it made South Korea a global defense player for the first time in history. Other nations have followed suit, purchasing a variety of arms from South Korea including advanced artillery systems. This surge in demand didn't happen just because South Korean arms are good, they are. It's also that the European defense industry has been caught with its strudel out in the wake of the Ukraine war and is overwhelmed with purchase orders. At a time when the US Secretary of Defense was privately telling his British counterpart that the US no longer considered the UK a world-class military power, US officials were praising the South Korean military as one of the best in the world. While European powers struggle with very serious readiness issues, US military leaders noted that South Korea's military was ready to quote, fight tonight. This is critical for a nation whose northern neighbor has actively called for its destruction. US officials praise the South Korean military so highly because, for all intents and purposes, it's a mirror of the US military. South Korean and US troops train jointly, and to the exact same standards. Both militaries are designed to freely incorporate into one another, allowing them to run joint operations. However, there are troubling signs in the South Korean military. Many within South Korea itself have criticized the government's focus on modernizing and building up its air and naval forces, which is understandable in the wake of an increasingly hostile China. However, this has left the army to be South Korea's red-headed stepchild, and army personnel are increasingly raising the alarm about the shrinking size of its ground combat force. While South Korea hopes that its overwhelming advantage in the air would overcome North Korea's numbers, North Korea still has a whole lot of numbers. With the South Korean defense industry going global, though, the nation is not set to be budged from its spot anytime soon. And if it wasn't for nuclear weapons, we think South Korea would trounce the pants off most other powers above it on the list. Number 5. UK This one's gonna make a lot of you tea drinkers angry, but the UK doesn't deserve to be in the number 5 spot. The only reason it's in the number 5 spot is because it has nukes. That's it. And that's its biggest problem, as admitted by their own defense analysts. The UK has relied on its nuclear weapons to deter conflict ever since the end of the Cold War, resulting in a military that is half the size that it should be, and one that by the UK's own admission lacks the capability to fight on its own for more than a few days. But that's not our hot take, that's coming straight from the UK's own defense sector. After a brief period of outrage, when the US told Defense Secretary Ben Wallace that it no longer considered the UK a top-tier fighting force, British analysts took to the airwaves to admit Sadly, the US's assessment was correct. According to British sources, the nation lacks the capability to weather the type of drone and missile attack Ukraine is facing, and if called upon to fight, the nation would take as much as 10 years to field a 30,000-strong infantry force complete with supporting tanks and helicopters. The UK is in the worst period of military readiness in centuries, and were it to find itself in a more dangerous time, it would have likely ceased to be independent long ago. Well, save for its nukes, but that's its biggest problem. The threat of using nuclear weapons is a strong one, but the UK has used its nuclear shield to absolutely atrophy its once world-renowned fighting forces. The UK's problems are numerous, from a lack of defense investment to continued personnel cuts. The British military does have some top-tier weaponry. Storm Shadow missiles have proven their deadly effectiveness in Ukraine, and given Russia its single greatest headache since the introduction of HIMARS. But the problem is that the nation has these types of weapons in very low numbers and its defense industry is not even remotely prepared to replace them. The UK finds itself dealing with a post-Brexit economic downturn made worse by the COVID pandemic. 
Now, inflation is putting yet another nail in the coffin of the UK's military budget. Yet, despite this, British leaders have at last come to terms with the fact that their military is no longer a combat-credible force. The UK does have aircraft carriers, but to man them must cannibalize crews from other ships. And a scenario where both the British Air Force and the British Naval Air Force operate simultaneously is extremely unlikely. The nation currently must prioritize one over the other. A dwindling fleet and lackluster recruitment number only adds to the UK's woes, as does equipment that is rapidly aging out of service with no replacements anywhere in sight. The only reason it's made it to the fifth spot on the list is because of its potent nuclear arsenal, but in a conventional war, pretty much every power below it on the list would defeat the UK in short order. Number 4. India The pupil has surpassed the master. Once a colony of the United Kingdom, today if India wanted to, it could probably make the UK its colony. India has a massive population, giving it an incredible pool of available manpower in case of an emergency. The nation also has a modern, robust military with a respectable air and naval force capable of power projection far from its own borders. As a member of the Carrier Club, India is very well suited to protecting its interests even far from its own shores. But India has its problems too. The nation finds itself at a crossroads, facing a full-blown military crisis in the near future. Historically, India has been closer to Russia than the US and its Western partners, and Russia has been India's biggest provider of arms. However, as China rapidly modernizes and the serious deficiencies in the Russian weapons have been exposed by the war in Ukraine, India is facing the troubling proposition of fighting its next war with an obsolete military. India's biggest geopolitical headaches are China and Pakistan, and while India is more than capable of dealing with a Pakistani threat, the two nations have joined up in a decidedly anti-Indian axis. China represents an uphill battle for India, and the nation is modernizing faster than India is. The situation is severe enough for India to break its close relationship with Russia and seek closer ties with the US, and most importantly with the US defense industry. Much of India's arsenal is of Russian origin, and the world has gotten a good look at how well Russian equipment fares against even small arsenals of Western weapons. This has shaken confidence globally in Russian arms, and the nation's arms sales have dropped precipitously in the wake of its invasion of Ukraine. But Russia's low quality was already evident years ago, when India broke off its cooperation with Russia in development of the Su-57. After millions invested in the effort, Indian engineers finally realized that Russia's Su-57 would never be able to match the F-35 or F-22 in neither stealth nor capabilities, and the nation decided to pull the plug. This effectively crippled Russia's Su-57 program, as the nation was unable to meet the budgetary demands all on its own. And it's the biggest reason for the lack of an operational aircraft today. India knows it desperately needs to modernize its aging air fleet, and now there's serious concerns about even tried and true Russian systems due to the nation's war in Ukraine and major supply delays. The US smelled an opportunity, and in February of 2023 they sent F-16s, F-18 Super Hornets, F-35s, and B-1B Lancers to take part in an air show in India. Meanwhile, Russia's largest defense company, Rosso Boron Export, had a shared stall where it displayed miniature models of aircraft, trucks, radars, and tanks. Yep, toys. The impact was huge on Indian fence circles, and while F-35s are not on the table yet, there has been growing interest in purchasing US weapon systems to modernize the Indian military. There is significant resistance to purchasing American weapons though, or even more Russian ones, as the nation looks to build up its own native defense sector. This is a preferred capability, as it would free its military from relying on foreign logistics and suppliers, while strengthening its own economy and its tech sector. But while India has many talented engineers and scientists, they lack the experience necessary for a modern, thriving defense sector. This can be corrected in time and with experience, but India might not have that time thanks to the growing pressure from China. For now, India's saving grace is the mountainous border between itself and China, which makes invasion from the north impossible, and strengthening its partnership with America, which would react strongly to a Chinese attack on India, and its sizable stockpile of modern nuclear arms. We predict that as Russia diminishes, India will soon take one of the top three spots, though. Number 3. Russia Russia was once the world's second strongest military power, except it probably wasn't and we were all just drinking the Vladimir-flavored Kool-Aid. Just months before its catastrophic invasion of Ukraine, major publications routinely ran articles touting the capabilities of the modern Russian military, a true combined arms force that inspired more than its fair share of US defense spending. We are no different. 
We reported the exact same thing Western analysts were saying for years about the Russian military, but as it's famously been said, war doesn't tolerate bullshit. If you claim that your tanks are the best in the world, well, the enemy gets a rebuttal in that conversation. And Ukraine's rebuttal against Russia's most modern tanks has been brutal. Though it wouldn't be fair to say Russia's best is bad, in truth, some of the best equipment is really quite good. It's just that there is exceedingly little of it. Russia's Su-35 is an extremely capable 4.5 gen fighter. It's so deadly that Russia's own air defenses blasted one out of the sky, despite literally having just been modernized. A few days later, they did it again. The answer to the proverbial question of what air defense doing seems to be blasting its own most modern jets out of the sky. Now, to be fair, it's difficult to accurately judge just how good Russian equipment is, mostly because without fail, its biggest flaw is the human element. Russian troops suck. This is the professional observation of a global defense analyst. They are poorly trained, they have low morale, and practically no discipline. Put some of the best equipment in the hands of some of the worst troops in the world, and the results will be predictable. For instance, we know for a fact that Russia's electronic warfare equipment is really quite good. It is so good that Russia had to turn it off because it was blocking its own communications and electronic signals. Quick side note, thanks Russia for abandoning your most modern EW vehicle right outside Kyiv in perfect working condition so NATO intelligence could tear it apart inch by inch. If you got a Ferrari, but you drive it like a tractor, it's hard to judge the true merits of said Ferrari. Then again, when we've seen Russia's most modern weapons in a fight, the results were lackluster. Russia bragged about its quote hypersonic missile, the Kinzhal. As soon as American Patriot air defense batteries joined the chat, Russia's Kinzhal started going boom, tens of thousands of feet above places they were meant to go boom at. The world has taken note too. Not only are Russian arms sales significantly down, but American arms sales have actually increased dramatically as demand for US systems seeing action in Ukraine is going through the roof. The bulk of the Russian military is, well, as bad as you can imagine. It was already operating borderline museum-grade equipment when it poked the hornet's nest that is Ukraine, making the modern Russian military a self-fulfilling joke as it operates vehicles and weapons built in the immediate aftermath of World War II. The only reason Russia remains so high on this list is due to two reasons. The first is its nukes, of which it has the largest stockpile in the world, or at least that's what it claims. After what we've seen the last two years, nobody would be much surprised to find out most of Russia's arsenal had been sold off at the nearest flea market by conscripts. There are serious questions about just how effective the remainder of its stockpiles are. And of the nuclear weapons that Russia does have that legitimately work, its own air defenses would probably end up destroying the aircraft or the missiles trying to deliver them. Russia is also very big, and its equipment stockpiles are some of the deepest in the world. Russia is basically a hoarder state. In preparation for an apocalyptic war with the US and its allies, the old Soviet Union stockpiled everything it possibly could, no matter how obsolete it was. That tactic had merit too. If it wasn't for those vast strategic reserves, Russia's already catastrophic war would have gone much worse. Number 2. China China has supplanted Russia in a relationship that began back in the Cold War, and it's now without a doubt the second most powerful military in the world. The rise of the Chinese military mirrors the meteoric rise of the nation itself. In the 1990s, the Chinese military was so weak it couldn't even challenge a single carrier America sailed between Taiwan and China during the third Taiwan Strait crisis. But today, China's military has grown significantly in power to the point of now fielding the world's largest naval force. Though here, we need some caveats, because the US Navy still outnumbers it by almost 50% in number of battle force missiles, and the US Navy displaces 4.5 million tons versus the Chinese Navy's 2 million tons. While China might have more ships, the US has more capable ships. However, China's made it very difficult for the US to fight any war in the Pacific. In a strategy known as anti-access area denial, China's created significant sea air conundrums for the US Navy in the form of long-range strike aircraft, over-the-horizon radars, and the largest missile force in the world. The People's Liberation Army Rocket Force is one of a kind. It's dedicated to missile warfare, and its series of anti-ship ballistic missiles are a significant threat to US naval assets and bases in the region. The J-20 has proven itself to be a competent 5th gen fighter, even if it lacks more advanced systems and stealth characteristics of the American F-35 or the soon-to-be-retired F-22. 
However, with the fleet suspected to be at over 200 and growing, China is the only nation in the world that can actually challenge the US Air Force. Its naval power is growing by leaps and bounds as well. Not only does China have more shipyards than the US, its largest shipyard is bigger than all US shipyards put together. While the US still retains the mass and missile advantage, it won't matter if China can simply zerg the US Navy with sheer numbers. With a Type 003 carrier coming online soon, China will be the only other nation to build a carrier capable of challenging a US supercarrier. But that is if China can fix serious problems with its carrier fighter program, which represents the nation's biggest Achilles heel, an immature defense sector. While far more capable than India's defense sector, China's modern defense industry is built almost entirely on stolen Western and Russian technology. As has been observed before, China has proven it extremely adept at stealing and reverse engineering military technology but far less so at developing said technology on its own. This threatens to place the Chinese defense industry in permanent second place to Western firms, as the nation lacks not just experience but precision in modern manufacturing, as evidenced by its reliance on Western and South Korean tooling machines. China is capable of correcting course, but faces serious roadblocks as the world has moved to block the Chinese economy from gaining access to the most advanced computer chips. At every turn, China faces increasing hurdles to fulfilling its ambitions of taking the number one spot. And truthfully, it's unknown just how good the Chinese military is. The nation has not fought a war since the 1970s, and only recently established a joint command for its military. With so much of its military doctrine inherited from the Soviet Union, China risks facing the same catastrophe as Russia in an attempt to invade Taiwan or otherwise push the US out of the Pacific for good. Number one. USA. In the top spot, it's the United States of America, the nation that invented freedom and global Cold War companionship title belt holder for 32 years in a row. It's a country that'll kill a terrorist earning 20 cents a day with a missile that costs $100 million to develop. And when you complain of collateral damage, it'll just spend millions to kill you with flying swords. There's three things America does best. Freedom, winning NFL World Championship titles, and fighting wars. Unlike Russia, when the US develops a new weapon system and states its capabilities, the world leans in to listen. The nation has both the largest bald eagle population and best defense industry, which we assure you is not a coincidence. Americans may not have health care and take Ubers to the emergency room because they'll never financially recover from an ambulance ride, but they have 11 carrier strike groups with enough combined firepower to be a top 10 military all on its own. Long ago, the US decided the best way to win a war was to wage it with the best technology around. Like any large military with literally millions of individual weapon systems, the US has some modernity issues, but these are few and actively becoming overcome. Plans to overhaul the US military, however, met with catastrophic failures in the 2000s, partly due to a shift in priorities to the low-intensity anti-terrorism conflicts, and partly because the US military went on a multi-year bender where it wasted entire nations worth of GDP on utter boondoggles. The US Army's future combat warrior program was supposed to field soldiers from the battlefields of the 41st millennium. Every piece of soldier equipment was to receive a huge technological upgrade to give each soldier unsurpassed overmatch over any adversary. In the end, after billions of dollars spent, the US Army discovered that implementing technology is uh, hard. Putting that technology on systems designed to be worn or carried by soldiers in a battlefield is significantly harder. So with a collective shrug to the billions of dollars wasted with no results, the Army gave up on the entire affair. The US Air Force was forced to spend astronomical sums to bring the F-35 online. But the worst offender by far is the US Navy, who should legitimately be investigated as a potential insider threat due to the incredible amounts of money it spent on garbage. In a secret attempt to destroy America by bankrupting it, the Navy invested into multiple utter boondoggle programs like the Zumwalt and Littoral Combat Ship. The former would prove to have a main gun that couldn't be used, mostly because its ammunition cost a million dollars a shot. The latter would produce a ship so incapable of even peacetime service that its operators have taken to calling it the little crappy ship. To make matters worse, Congress refuses to cancel production contracts on a ship widely hailed as being completely non-survivable in a combat scenario. America's problem was too many investments in too many immature technologies, which led to a collective gasp of surprise as the excitement wore off and the US realized that China had significantly closed the gap between itself and the US. However, what systems the US does field are world-class, and it fields a whole lot of them. 
Russia continues to find it difficult to counter the effects of 24 Ukrainian HIMARS. The US has 450 left in its inventory. The F-35 has proven to be everything promised, well, everything except cheap. And the US is adding over 100 airframes to its inventory every year, prompting some Chinese analysts to comment that the time for China to challenge the US is shrinking. The US also has major updates for every major combat platform already in development. Even with only a fraction of the US Air Fleet consisting of F-35s, both the US Air Force and Navy are developing a sixth-generation replacement, and the Air Force has already flown its version. Ford-class carriers will continue to come online over the next decade, with the first of its class deployed on its first combat deployment to support regional stability in the wake of the conflict between Israel and Hamas. America's fleet of cruisers and destroyers will soon be phased out by their replacements, and the B-21 Raider will start rolling off factory floors within months of this script. To back all of this up, the US military takes training very seriously, routinely hosting realistic training exercises both at home and abroad with coalition partners. The US military is an extremely credible force. The threat posed by a single carrier strike group has historically been enough to quell most simmering conflicts. What truly makes the US military an insurmountable opponent, though, is its global network of partners and allies, history's most broad military coalition that literally circles the globe. When you mess with the US, you aren't just getting the best the US has to offer, you're inevitably getting the best from any number of US partners. As long as the US Navy doesn't continue trying to bankrupt America by destroying its bank account, the US seems set to continue dominating the world with its stolen UFO technology as the world's number one military. Now go check out Real Reason China Wants to Expand, or click this other video instead.